Hey, hey, B. That I have a question, man. Um, there's an upcoming RBE card that is featuring a winner take all battle with Ver versus Jim. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to know your opinion on winner take all. Like, would you ever do something like that? I mean, what do you think about Verb, you know, his status even taking a battle like that? Because there is a chance that you could walk off stage not getting paid anything. Yeah, I don't – Um, for me – for me – Damn, that's a hard one, bro, for me personally, because I really don't battle for the money. You know what I mean? Like, in fact, uh, when I was supposed to battle E. Hart for that Queen of the Ring event that, that, that got canceled because they didn't have our money, I was the only person that still wanted to battle because I kind of felt like everybody came out, everybody was there, everybody should still battle. So to answer your question, I don't know. That's like, I guess that's kind of circumstantial. Like, I guess it depends on what's going on in my life at that time, if I need that bread, you know, like if it's something – you know, if it's something that's conducive to my life and I actually need that money or whatever the case may be, but I, I just can't see myself. I can't like if it's a battle I want it. I can't see myself not doing it because it was a winner take all. I'll say it like that. Like like if Verb wanted to battle me for a winner take all, I would definitely battle him for a winner take all for sure. You know what I mean? But I, I don't think I would battle like um, like Loso for a winner take all or somebody that I. Uh, that I consider, I don't know, like a, a couple of steps lower than me or whatever the, the case may be. But if it was definitely somebody that I wanted to battle, I would definitely do a winner-take-all because it's not necessarily about the money at the end of the day. I, I, I want to uh, bring up Wang in this situation because we did have ARP on the show on New Year's Eve, and we were talking about this whole card. And uh, we asked us what our predictions was specifically for this battle. So I, I don't know how you're going to take this, B-Dot, but I feel this way. If you been, uh-huh. if we all been following Verb ever since he battled, you feel what I'm saying? First of all, URL when he started making his blogs with his homeboy, old street status, and all these other brothers, he's very, he's very charismatic and very funny. But one thing he always said is he would battle anybody if the price is right. Now, yeah. you're putting Verb in the situation where the winner takes all. We already know that he's money driven. If he was to get mm-hmm. into a situation that's when it take all, that's probably going to be the best, the best verb that you see in the past five years, because that's he loves point. money. He loves money so much. He's not willing to walk out that building without a bag. And then we got to go back to summer madness too. You know how yeah. hard that shit hurt verb that he lost some ten wax to T wax. He's not going to let that happen again. So that's a great I point. Have, I agree. I actually have Bird washing gems. He's going to wash him. He wants to leave well, with this money. Well, yeah, and, and, and really, I mean, shit, money aside, I, I, I just think when you deal with the skill set of the two brothers, I just think Verb's a better rapper in general. You know what I mean? Like, I just think, I, just in general, Verb, Verb is a better battle rapper and rapper than Jim, so I, I would have him winning regardless. And then on top of that, like you said, yeah, the brother is money-driven. So I, I definitely I definitely take Verb in that battle 2-1 for sure. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, one, one more thing I wanted to ask you. Uh, I, I know recently because I, I think I put a tweet out to you. I think it was last month. You know, because I've been listening to a lot of your music, man. You know, ever since you know, I really first had watched you was years back when I think it was like a rock star battle or something like that. Year years back when I very first. Yeah, started. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'd always been, yeah, like, when I seen you then, I was like, man, I, I like how he rap. I like that. And I'd always, like, paid attention. And, you know, I've been listening to your music, you know, throughout, you know, the years and whatnot. And I know recently you just had a song that just dropped, and it was fire. Like, it was just crazy. And, you know, Thanks, I was wondering, like, you know, that. with your music, man, um, like, I know you said that that's, like, your passion. That's how you take it seriously. Like, with your music, like, what what is your goal as far as the music? Is it the same thing with battle rap just to create conversation? Or is this something where it's, like, you're doing it just for the art form and just you just love doing it? Yeah, I'm at a space right now, you know, like, being older, like, doing this. Sh- I mean, I've been making music since I was, like, 14 years old. You know what I mean? Like, so... Being at the age that I'm at right now, I kind of just I kind of just feel like the conscious community or the people that are into what we're into, they deserve quality music that's just as good as everything they hear on the radio, but that has a message. So at this point in my my life and my career, I just want to make a quality album 
you know, on the same level as a, as a Kendrick or a J. Cole. But I just want to – I love what them brothers is doing, but I just kind of want to go a little more in-depth with the, with the historicity of our people, and I kind of want to be a little more unapologetic about it and um, just, make, just make something that is the soundtrack – to the lives of brothers and sisters that are about black empowerment. You know what I mean? So that's really my goal and my hope. And, and, and with that being said, I, I hope that I can definitely um, have some financial gain from that as well. You know what I mean? Like, I, I hope that that's something. Uh, hold on, hold on. One second. Somebody at my door. One second. Uh, hello? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Hey, come here. My fault, y'all. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to make something for the people that that that's that's for their life and their lifestyle, and potentially like tour with it and you know move around the country with it. That's that's definitely the goal, man. Hopefully, I'm working hard at that right now. Hopefully, that's something I can do. But that goal is a little bit different than battle rap because I want to. I'm, I'm hoping that that's a little more lengthy. You know what I mean? Like I'm hoping that I can generate enough enough of a fan base um, to where I can tour and continue to. Drop this album this year Maybe drop another album this year And continue to tour off that And continue to run it around And do shows and things of that nature That's really the goal Just Spread the message within the good music Alright Let me ask you this question B. Dot For real You feel me Because I want to ask you personally This is a little bit outside of battle rap But it, it, has, it does pertain with battle rap Who are some of your biggest inspirations On a music level When you're creating content That's outside of the arena of battle rap who were like some of your favorite rappers that you grew up listening to? Um, I, I would say the cliche names, you know what I'm saying? The the because I, I grew up listening to people my pops listened to, you know, of course. So my pops been in the music industry all his life, so I just kind of grew up with music. And uh, the one of the early names is Scarface. Like Scarface is somebody my pops used to always play. So I'll say Scarface. And then, of course, the the usual suspects, the Jay-Z, the Nas, the Tupac. And then uh, in my later years, in my more recent years, um, you know, just, just falling in love with, with, with Lauryn Hill and what she did and, and, and that phenomenal album she put out, um, Common, um, who else? Uh, of course, like I, like I just mentioned, Kendrick and J. Cole, them, I love what them brothers are doing. These are all people that inspire me. Like, I, I study their work. Like, I study – how Kendrick formulates the album. I study the uh, e- even the song choices, like you know the 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 the, uh, the structure, like what song goes before what song, like all that matters oh, yeah. into making a masterpiece. Facts. You know what I mean? So I study all that, and it, I would say yeah, like Kendrick, J Cole, um, and of course all the legends, the Jay Z, the Nas, the Pox, and all of that. Yeah, I mean the reason why I ask it because I can tell the way that you look at. Rap as a art, as a complete art form, for real. That mm-hmm. the respect for it is real, and you're one of the only Absolutely. people that I ever talked to that talk about track listing. Because I've I've heard plenty yeah. of albums that would have been good if certain songs was rearranged in certain areas. Now, yeah, let's go back. Let's go back to the Kid Man City for a second. A lot of people don't realize that when you look at the front, the album cover, you know, what I mean, the, the index of the of, of the of, of the album. If you listen to the album in its entirety, it's just one tape. So he took you back to the right. essence with the cassette tape. So after the last song go off, you hear the tape click. You feel what I'm saying? That's how you put yeah. together a co- that's how you put together a cohesive co- body of work. All of these things play a part. So now let me re- regulate that to battle rap. Somebody right. put together three magical rounds. Everything is structured to go a certain way. And I know a lot of people don't like Murder Mook, but this is why he consistently wins because mm-hmm. he is very strategic with it. And that's something that I feel as though that B-Dot is bringing to the table. And now, right. and going back on the strategy, that's how you see Cortez off, in my opinion, when you battle him. Because he thought you could right. preach to him, hand him an unk, you feel what I'm saying, and, and, and bring him you know, bring him to the pasture or something like that. But you just told right, him, right. Stuff, like, hold on, I'm still this guy as well. I mean, you should right. get to work. <laughs> You know, and a lot of battle rappers don't construct their rounds that way. You know, because that's how you know. Rappers, and I, I've said this before on a radio show with someone, but I, I said that's how you know that they're not good rappers, like good artists, like in terms of songwriting and song structure. They don't understand structure. They don't understand how to structure verses and, and structure rounds. Like you can see, it's very evident. Like, like even with Cortez. 
you know what it made? What, and the same, I told Strick this because me and Strick is actually, you know, good friends now. We speak often. And I, I'll say the same thing about Cortez is like I told Strick. If Strick would have structured his rounds for me different in terms of what round he said what things in, like like his, his second round to me was his strongest round where he was breaking down uh, white privilege. Now he doesn't feel like he has white privilege because he's white trash and he's from the bottom and yada, yada, yada. You have to structure your rounds in a certain way to mirror what your opponent may say and when your opponent may say it. So somebody like me, like Cortez, Cortez's first round should have been his third round. Mm. You know what I mean? Because then, then you would have left because fans are going to kind of debate from a round to round basis. So then, the flow, the fluidity of, of Cortez's performance would have went on, on, on a on a up instead of on a decline. It would have went on an incline, and that's kind of like how I structure my rounds. I always structure my rounds to go on an incline, and I, I lean on my cadence and performance within my first two rounds to keep you engaged to make you feel like it's going on an incline. And then the third round is definitely going on an incline because I'm going to disseminate a lot of information and drop a lot of knowledge. And this, this is, that, that, that also comes with me being a great recording artist, me being a great songwriter, mm-hmm. like me, me understanding song structure and shit like that. And I, I feel like 90 per, and that's why battle rappers have that bad, bad stigma of not making good records because the actuality is they can't, they don't know how to structure records. They don't know how to, you know, they don't know how to, how to make their records go up. They don't know how to right. ha- have their records have up and downs and have bridges and breakdowns. Like they don't understand the concept of great songwriting. So you can tell those who do in battle rap, and you can tell those who don't. And if you check out their music, it's usually the dudes that know how to structure their rounds, that know how to make great music as well. And I happen to be one of those brothers. And now, and, and to, uh, the build on what you're saying, for real, this is what separates good artists from great artists. A lot of people that's listening right now is probably going to crucify me for this, but people say that Jada Kiss is the top five all times. But if you listen to any of his albums, it just sounds like a whole bunch of songs thrown together. That could coincide yeah. with battle rap as well. If we look at somebody like Arsenal, you can like he is so, in my opinion, very good at rapping. But he's so repetitive that you can take a round that he had in a battle for three years ago and put mm-hmm. it in the bridge battle, and it'll sound exactly the same. There's really no structure there. It's, it's more yeah. like shock value. You see you know what I'm saying? I see. So I see what you're saying. So basically, that's why Lux is very. That's why Lux is put on such a high pedigree as he is, as far as right. when he came back and made his return. As trash as people say that the Mook versus Iron Solomon battle is, if you really break down everything that Mook was saying, he was building Iron up to destroy him, which mm-hmm. basically he did. Mm-hmm. You feel right. me? The, especially, I mean, especially the Young Hot battle, you feel what I'm saying, with Mook. You feel like that's the first battle, in my opinion, that had a whole storyline behind Well, actually, the Serious Jones battle. But it had a storyline behind it. It had a scheme. It had an angle. And it had an ending to it. Some of these dudes are just right. coming here just talking about how they just blamed the Niner for three wins. <laughs> that's a fact. <laughs> you know no, that's saying? a fact, man. Every, yeah, that, that, that's a fact, man. Like like I said, everybody don't have it, you know. Some some people are like, I mean, even if you look at Hollow, man, he's considered one of the greatest, if not the greatest, and Hollow would even tell you that he don't feel like he make great music or whatever. Like you know what I mean? Like making music is not a thing that that he cares about doing. You know what I mean? Because it's just like some people, some people have it and some people don't, man. And I think I think the transition is easier when you're when you're used to making good music and knowing how to structure songs, and then you come into battle rap as opposed to being a battle rapper, you know, and, and going into writing music. battle bars and going into music. Absolutely, like it's. Yes. it's it's backwards. Like I, I listen to a lot of these brothers, and I'm not gonna say this in an arrogant way either. So, part, pardon me for saying it this way, but I, I definitely feel like I make the best music out, out of battle rappers. I mean, um, with, with maybe the exception of Lux, I feel like Lux makes great music too, conceptual wise. Like he knows how to structure records as well. But um, for the most part, I would say that I, if anybody was to listen to any of my old work or listen to my SoundCloud and some of the records, some of the new records that I have out. I don't I don't hear nobody making great music like that. Um I, I do like Briz though. I feel like Briz makes dope music. But outside of me and Briz, I don't really see nobody really making good music like that in battle rap. I won't say this though. I mean I do have the Cape for Verb right now because um I think he had an album that came out in two thousand and thirteen called um his interviews with a white chick or something like that. It was very conceptual yeah. 
because he was talking to a therapist the whole album. You dig what I'm saying? Which I thought was very dope. And mm. the beat se- the beat selection that he picked was very dope as well. It gave me a real blueprint type of feel to it. Whole bunch of you feel what I'm saying? Samples, harmony, you know all these things. He could ride a beat very well as as well, but. That's the only project that I can really speak of as far as battle rappers. It's very few and far in between. You feel what I'm yeah, saying? As far yeah. as the battle rappers that make music. Like, I don't want to hear that shit. And be, right. I will bring this up. A lot of people be like, T-Rex is spitting mixtape bars. I'm like, you listen to T-Rex mixtapes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I don't mean to say it like that because I love T Rex for real, but I'll be like, I don't listen to none of his music when he's not on stage. You, I yeah, just don't. yeah, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I hear you though. That's a fact. <laughs> hey, be that. Yes, sir. So we got this uh, upcoming card in April. L A oh. Battlegrounds got a lot of. Yeah. A lot of our West Coast artists on here, man, getting ready to put in work, man. What are your thoughts on the card, man, and, and who and who are you looking forward to seeing the most out of the people that's on it? Man, I'm so excited about it, man. Um, I'm looking forward to pretty much every matchup, but the two that stand out the most is um, Gichi Gotti versus Link and uh, Strick versus Young Cannon. I think this is Strick's um, potential or, 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 or opportunity, rather, to really step for you know step forward in battle rap culture and be one of these guys that 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 deserves respect. I think I personally think Strick is exceptional. He just got to really he got to really want to be exceptional. Like I talked to that dude on the phone, man, and he just does not care. Like he's just such a he's such a down south Texas just you know what I mean? Like he just he don't care, man. So I'm trying to get him to care a little more about battle rap because I feel like he would be exceptional. But yeah, man, Strick versus Young Cannon and then. Gichi Gotti versus Link, man. I feel like both of those are going to be crazy, but all the matchups are dope. You got um, you got my brother Remedy, you know, who's one of the who's one of the early inspirations even before Lux. People always want to talk about Lux being the first conscious brother in battle rap, but it might have been Remedy. Um, if, yeah. if if my right. if my dates yeah if if my dates served me right, I think Remedy might have did what he did to the brother uh, T Dub, I believe was his name. Um, oh, when he uh, kinda... no, 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 actually, that was that was after because I am a T Dub O fan. I ain't gonna lie, he's actually one of my favorite battle rappers. Period. Oh, okay. that was after, that was after, that was after, that was after, that was after Lux. Okay, but, but okay, okay. credit what you're saying, though, he was always kicking that shit before Summer Madness too. So I will credit you. Okay, him. okay, well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. So, so, so that was my point. Remedy is one of the dudes that, that's been doing it for a long time. So we got Remedy versus Fly King, you know, who was obviously. You know the homosexual battle rapper or whatever. So I feel like that's going to be a crazy conversation. Like I already know, I already I already know what Remedy going to say. I just want to hear how he going to say it because he's an exceptional rapper and writer. So um, I'm really looking forward to that one as well. Man, I'm looking forward to the whole card, man. I'm so mad I wasn't on that joint. It's it's so dope too because the theme is OGs versus BGs. So me versus her would have been a perfect concept for that battle, for that for that uh, event, man. So. It's unfortunate That's that we're not going to be on there, but I'll definitely be in the building, though, man. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'll, I'll be in the building for that one as well, man. But one battle that I I wasn't necessarily looking forward to it, like it, it's a fire battle on paper, but the back and forth has been killing me the last month and a half, man, is uh, Yak versus Saint, man. The back and forth they've oh, been yeah, having yeah. has been hilarious <laughs> in these groups and on their pages, man. They they yeah, that's a they fact. really showing you how to sell a fight like a lot of battle rappers that's need to fact. take notes because they really selling that fight for real like that's a really good yeah. um selling they doing. Yeah, I agree. I agree, man. They hungry, man. Yak Yak and Saint is hungry, man. They talented. They deserve their shot. So shout out to them, man. I, yeah, I forgot about. I was I was trying to think about all the battles in my head and the ones that I named is the ones that kind of stuck out to me. But yeah, that one too, man. That event, that whole event is going to be crazy, man. That that's a good look for for the West Coast, and that's a really good look for LA Battlegrounds, man. Even even without me and without Dre Vicious and a lot of the the top tier guys that's been kind of carrying that league, even without us, they were able to still put together a, an exceptional card, man. So shout out to Traz and Woods, the, the owners of LA Battlegrounds, that was able to put that together because that's still going to be dope, even without us on it. Yeah, that 
That that was great, man. I'm looking forward to that Geechee Gotti versus Saint to drop pretty soon, man. I I, I think that's going to do some some really good things for both of them, man. Yeah, that's a fact, bro. Them dudes was crazy. They went crazy that battle. I I got a question yeah, for both of y'all actually. I got a question for B dot and Nico for real. Judge battles. How do we feel not about feeling. them? Nah, not feeling, not feeling them. I'm not feeling yeah. them because I don't I don't think you can judge a battle on the spot because it's it's so I much was, in, intricacies. It's so I layered. Like you know what I mean? I like this brother. Yeah, I just like, want to say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, it's, it's 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 too intricate. Like, can you imagine trying to judge? How do you a judge Lux and Hollow on the spot? Yeah. Thank like, you. <laughs> imagine judging Lux and Hollow on the spot, like right there. Who? So who won this battle? Right after the battle's over. Come on, brother. You can't even do that. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm, glad that you you brought, okay? I'm glad that you brought that. Back, I'm glad you brought that battle up first because yeah, I nah. remember when the first the first high stakes. We treated it like it was a Super Bowl. All our homeboys, one of them rented the uh, the, the pay per view. We went over there. Yeah. And did what we do? We congregate with each other and we watch the right. battle. And right. everybody in the world was like, "Hollow won," but it was very close. I right. went home and all the battles was on YouTube, and I watched this battle five times, literally back to back. I'm like, "There's no way in the world Hollow won this battle." But if they judged it right then and there on the spot. Hollow would have left with a victory, in my opinion. And Lux would have took an L. But Lux washed him all yeah. three rounds. The setup, this, this goes back to uh, basically building up your, your storyline in the middle of a battle. His first round was setting him up. The second round, he was basically putting him in his plot. And the third round, he just talked to this man and tie his soul. His soul. Yeah. It, it was crazy. Yeah, you I cannot know. judge That's that battle on the spot. You can't. Yeah, I don't. Cannot. I don't think. I don't think you could uh, judge battles because there's, even if it's not going to be said, we got to be real. There's a lot of bias, and it's also cultural bias as well as mm-hmm. parts of the country Facts. bias because Regional you had that bias, judge yeah. part last year on RBE with so the writers' block for Team Tommy. And right. there, not even just that battle. There were other battles on that card. JC and uh, J Murder. That was a lot closer too. And I, I'm, I'm a big fan of JC, but I thought that J Murder was really he improved by the round where JC was the same every single round. And I feel like there's a lot of judges. There's a lot of bias, and especially if we're talking about like if we had a West Coast versus East Coast card. Who are you having to judge that? Because even if you said, well, we'll take somebody from the Midwest and let Midwest judge it, they've been in New York so long, I can't even trust that judgment. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. it's just so yeah, much yeah. with that. I, I, I just, I can't, I couldn't feel comfortable with it personally. I mean, I, honestly, in my opinion, it's no proper way to judge any battle for real. Because I was thinking about it and I thought to myself, well, all right, let's say, for instance, they have the battle. Instead of them judging the battle on the spot, the three judges or five judges that was there when they was looking at the battle will look at the video footage of the battle and they come out with who they felt won next week. But even then, it could be some bias we say. This is the only sport that we consider a sport that doesn't have a point system, a legit point system. There's no way right. in the world, if I'm in the NBA and I shoot a three-point shot, somebody in the crowd could be like, no, nah, that only counts for two points. This is the only sport that we do that in. Because you can call something a haymaker, and I can be like, that's light. Right. So, that's that's so a it's, fact. It's, yeah, it, it's too subjective. It's too exactly. subjective, man. There's no way. There's no way. We need to keep it the way it is, do a battle, let the culture discuss it, you know, let people comment, and, and it's all good. Because I think there's an overall consensus at the end of the day. There's an overall feeling of who won a battle. Like, no matter what people want to say, there's always an overall feeling. Like, you could tell, like, even with that hollow versus Lutz, which I think is the most debatable battle of all time, we can, we can all, I think majority of people can all agree to slightly edge it to Lux just be, based on the mere fact that he's just a better rapper. Like, he raps better. Right. You know what I mean? Like, even, even without breaking down the subject and the content and the layers and the intricacies, it's just like he raps better. Like, he has a better delivery, a better cadence. Like, he's just a more polished rapper. So, if it comes down to that, you just edge it to the, to the actual better rapper. Like, you know? So, I don't know, bro. I, I'm i definitely not for it. I don't think I would ever do a judge battle, especially somebody like me with the shit I be saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I right. don't know. Like, the judges wouldn't I mean, be you, you what I'm saying. I mean, because you can definitely ruffle a lot of feathers. You feel what I'm saying? 
Especially yeah, I be trying not to look at the comments, but I look at them from time to time just to see. But I was looking at the Cortez comments, and you got you just got some people that just be like, "Man, B dot was B dot was talking that Spanish shit, and I'm Puerto Rican. Fuck B dot, three old Cortez. Like you know what I mean? Right, like, exactly. Not even not even really talking about like the rapping part of it, just talking about the content and what they didn't like. You know, so yeah, how it affects them as a person. You feel what I'm saying? It's regional <laughs> bias comes into play as well. You feel what I'm saying? Like just certain things come into play. You didn't like I didn't say somebody said that a battle or lost a battle because of what he wore. I'm yeah, just saying. come on, bro. Come on, right. bro. And then, and then and then you got these people that give people credit for pocket tapping and being hella aggressive and all that. It's like, come on, man. That don't got right. nothing to do with the battle. That don't got nothing to do with the with the rap. Like Shotgun right. sure cannot win a joke. battle because he punked somebody. Right. Yes. Yeah, like, it's see, it's, it, it's it, entertaining, it, but I'm not giving him points for it. Him as an MC, like yeah, it's entertaining, but he don't get no points as an MC for that. Like, anybody that, can do that. That. that goes, that goes back to uh, the Shotgun Shud battle versus Bill Collector. He beat him yeah. off of his bars. The antics that he brought to the table as well was just the icing on the cake, pretty much. Right. So he definitely beat him with his bars. That's but, a fact. But if if Bill Collector would just give him that work, but then everybody be like. I be uh, Bill Collector was spitting that shit, but did you see how Suge just rearranged his posture when he was on stage? And you giving him the battle right. of that? Now we have a right. problem. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So I think, as far as when it comes to the bars, the angles, and the outlooks on stage, as far as battle rap, these are the first things that has to come into play. You right. Feel me? That's a fact. You can add all these other things on later. Like the pocket tap is like I go a lot. A lot of people feel as though that Sharon beat. Should I think that should beat Sharon, but the pocket tap in that whole it, between that battle was funny because he pocket tapped Sharon and, and he dropped his bottle like that was hella funny to me. But I would never use that. <laughs> <laughs> I would never use that to, to say that's why I think you won. Right, right, right. Malcolm, come on, come on, man. You good? You good? Yeah, you good. but um, uh, but um, uh, but um, uh, man, you know I. Man, I, I I can't even tell you, man, how much I appreciate you being on with us, man. We got a couple minutes left, man. I want to give you a chance to, uh, to plug, you know, anything you have going on, your music, let people know where to get it at. Also, any shout outs that you want to do, man. I'll let these last few minutes be all you. All right, first and foremost, man, I appreciate all y'all. Wing, Nico, Brother Greg, man, I, I appreciate y'all support, man. I feel like when we get on the line, I feel like I'm talking to family, you feel me? So. I feel like I could be myself and open up to y'all, man. So I appreciate y'all off top for that, first and foremost. And, um, yeah, man, everybody interested in what I got going on, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram. It's uh, b.thegod, and there's underscores under each word. So b underscore dot underscore the underscore god. And, um, yeah, man, just uh, my, my SoundCloud is soundcloud.com backslash king dot. And uh, I'm dropping a lot of music, man. Um, I'm kind of what I'm doing with this project is trying to drop some singles, just to kind of gauge what people are liking from me musically, and then I'm gonna use that to kind of conceptually put together the album and sonically put together the album. So, working on the album, brother. You know, like that's my main thing. Just trying to trying to get that out. So anybody that's interested in what I got going, man, just follow me on the social media, and I will keep you updated on what I'm doing. Hopefully, I have the album out in the summer working on the book that I've been working on for two or three years now. I just got to buckle down and finish the book. So hopefully I have that out uh, this year, maybe later this year. And um, like I said, man, I'm, right now I'm just not uh, not really feeling battle rap at the moment, but uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm always open. And, um, yeah, y'all just stay locked in with me, and I appreciate all the support. Hey, man, we – hey, man, seriously appreciate you, man. Hey. And if, whether you do or do continue battle rap, man, you definitely made an impact on, on everybody. Even those of us who were already, if you want to call it conscious, enlightened. I mean, myself, I didn't learn some, some things just listening to your rounds and just open my eyes to certain things as well. So you definitely did exactly what you came in the game to do. And, you know, I, I appreciate you, man. Brother Greg, I'll let you go ahead and say a couple things. Um, support battle rap. Support the culture. You know, and, and and don't be too hard on these battle rappers. We all have our opinion, but we all have a brain as well. We all have a conscience as well. So I take it out. Give them give them that critique, but at the same time, just don't just jump out there just saying a whole bunch of belligerent, stupid stuff. Because 
majority of the people that are fans of battle rap never been on the stage before. <clears throat> Excuse me. Never been on the stage before, never been in front of thousands of people, giving them new material that they never heard and making them yeah. rock with what they're listening to. I don't yeah, think yeah, people yeah. understand how hard that is. That's and, y'all fact, taking it for, and y'all taking it for granted for real, man. Y'all have to support these people while they're here. Mm-hmm. And that's all I'm going to say. Salute. No salute to Nico and salute to uh, B. Dot. And salute to Wayne, salute to Jay, salute to everybody out there that's trying to push the culture forward. Salute, King. No, no doubt. But, but yeah, B. Dot, man, I appreciate you, man, giving us the time, man, chopping it up with us, man. And, you know, keep doing your thing, man. Support and much love. No doubt, brother. I appreciate you, fam.